Second Epistle of the Holy Apostle St. Paul to the Corinthians. Let us be attentive. Brethren, you are the temple of the living God. Just as God has said, I will dwell with them and walk among them. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Therefore, come out from among them, and separate yourselves from them, says the Lord. And touch nothing unclean. I will welcome you and be a father to you, and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Since we have these promises, beloved, let us purify ourselves from every defilement of flesh and spirit, and in the fear of God strive to fulfill our consecration perfectly. In speaking of our wisdom, we are Thank you. 
glory to Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Yesterday we celebrated the feast of the holy protection of Mary. The feast of her holy protection of the death that would took place in the year October 1st, 9-11. And today, we celebrate the synaxis of that feast. We're celebrating St. Andrew the Fool, who's the one that witnessed it, he and his disciple of Phineas. We do a lot of these synaxis, don't we? We do it after Christmas Day, after the Feast of the Nativity. The next day is the synaxis of the Theotokos. We do it after the birth of the Mother of God. The next day is the synaxis of Joel the Banana. Same with John the Baptist, Zachariah and Elizabeth. So we always have a day after for somebody related to that event. So today it's St. Andrew the Fool. How many have heard that commercial? I'm not a doctor, but I play one on TV. Maybe you come across that once in your life. Monday, last Monday, before I departed for Pittsburgh, I had to do some office work and then take the collection to the bank, which is down on First Avenue. And I was going down the hill, down Holgate there, and right by the uh, office deep. I saw this fella, he looked old, but I'll bet he was maybe in his late 30s, if that. And because of the life, hard life he was living, Mondays are very active down in that area the homeless and they're all they're just very busy anyway this one fella had three big shopping carts and they were tied together with ropes and each shopping cart had big bags of what is obviously crushed aluminum cans mounds of these in each one and then they were tied to the sides of the cart as well and there he was, trying to go across the street, pooling all three carts with all his might through the, the potholes and going around them and trying to get to his destination. The effort just to watch him, I have to stop and wait for him to get by me, was amazing. And the poor guy had to go finish crossing the street, go down the fourth avenue, and then go all the way down to the recycling center. What effort. He was putting into his task. Not too long before that, Connie Kell and I were down there, and we see this often. Is men, or sometimes with women, they get these big bundles of wire. Now I'm sure that that wire wasn't given to them. But what they're doing with the wire is they're stripping the rubber casing or the plastic casing. And that's not easy. Because see, you get more money with clean wire than you do with the coating on it. And so you see them cutting with knives and standing on the wire and pulling with all of my trying to rip off the casing. What effort these people are putting in to eke out whatever kind of life it is that they seem to want. How much effort for a few pennies, for maybe a little bit of food, but we know mostly for what else. And we were thinking to ourselves, my gosh, look at all the effort they put in to do this. If I only put in half the effort for my salvation as they put in for theirs, how much further along would I We hear in our gospel, you know, about what Jesus says about the, the, the opening up love. Remember, he gave me only one command. He gave me just one command. Just one. To love one another as I have loved you. And then the rest is unpacking what that means. In the case of today, we taught, heard about loving your enemy and doing good to them. And just a few verses later, he says, Judge not, and you won't be judged. Condemn not, and you won't be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. My goodness, I can't seem to do half of that with any type of success. I've seen to harbor judgment and, and condemnation at a moment's notice. 
I don't put any serious effort into it, obviously, because I haven't come close to mastering it in all these years. And I think to myself, I am not a Christian. I'm just playing one like on TV. I prance around in pretty vestments. I walk around proclaiming I, I am a Christian, and yet I don't put half the effort into living my spiritual life as they do living theirs and trying to eat out an existence. Jesus says sinners and tax collectors are going to get to heaven before us. Because they're willing to make a change. They're willing to do whatever it takes and whatever, whatever efforts required. So they're a reproach to me every time I go down there. Am I living my Christian life the way they're trying to live theirs with as much effort? Am I living it as if my life literally depended on it? Because they do. Every morning they wake up and the one thing they have to get is whatever it is that they have to have. We know that could be drugs or alcohol and maybe a little bit of food. Because after they come off their high, they're hungry. But they work with such tenaciousness for that end goal. Do I? Do you? Love one another as I have loved you. It's so easy. And yet I keep putting up barriers because I'm tempted to judge. And I'm tempted to condemn. And I'm tempted not to forgive because all those give me power over somebody or make me not look bad. Because I don't want to look bad in these fancy clothes. Am I willing to pull the cards like they do? The cards of all the, the virtues that I'm called to strive to attain and do the effort into attaining them. Which requires us to love those who hate us. To do good to them. Can we honestly say we do that without effort? Hence, we honestly say it, we don't start making a judgment call on somebody because they don't match up with what I want. I'm quick to them. I'm not going to forgive because I don't want them to have power over me. I like to have, even though it doesn't affect them at all, I know I want them, it's my mind to think I have control over them, so I'm not going to forgive. This gospel is calling us on the carpet today. Because they are going to be my judge. They're going to say, I don't have the gifts that I, you have been given. I'm living a life, you know, this is the cards I've dealt with, and, and no one seems to show my way, and then my mind's messed up enough, I can't seem to see it. But I have been given the gifts. I have been hearing the, the words. And yet, I'm not living up to what I'm called to do. So as we go about our days this week, and you see the busy bees down there, ask yourselves, am I a true and authentic Christian? Or am I just playing one like on TV? Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Thank you. 
to show its mercy, and for all Christians of that good faith. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Glory, merciful and loving God, we give glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Oh, uh-huh. 
sacrifice of praise from those who call upon you with their whole hearts, accept also their prayer with sinners, bring us to your holy altar, enable us to offer you gifts and spiritual sacrifices for our sins of the people daily. Make us worthy to find favor in your sight that our sacrifice may be pleasing to you, and that the good spirit of your grace may rest on us all these gifts here present and all your people. Command this the mercy of your only begotten Son, with whom you are blessed, together with your all holy and life creating spirit, now and ever and forever. Tens of thousands of angels, 
Arabin and Seraphim, six winged, pity eyed, sword locked, on their wings, shit singing, shouting, cry loud, and saying, the triumph of Oh, 
Metropolitan way of preserving the only churches of peace, safety on rail for many years, as a favor for the word of your truth. And remember all your people. So for this city, which we draw in every city and community of faithful living in them, remember all over those who travel by sea, air and land, the sick, the suffering, and have to be granted salvation. Remember all of those who bring offerings of poor and good deeds, and all the churches and those who remember the poor, and upon all of us sin, down your mercies upon this church. And grant that with one voice, one arm, and may glorify and praise you, most honored and magnificent name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now, whatever, and forever.
me, O Master, when you come into your kingdom. Remember me, O Holy One, when you come into your kingdom. May the partaking of your holy mysteries, O Lord, be not for my judgment or condemnation, but for the healing of soul and body. O Lord, I also believe and profess that this which I am about to receive is truly your most precious body and your life-giving blood, which I pray may be worthy to receive for the remission of all my sins and for life everlasting. Amen. O God, be merciful to me, a sinner. O God, cleanse me of my sins and have mercy on me. O Lord, forgive me for I have sinned without hunger.
Christ, let us believe that the Lord have mercy. Now stand in Father, Son, Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. getting ready for our next phase of expansion is tearing down the rectory and building that large complex where we have a bigger hall storage which we desperately need and the second floor will be offices and classrooms and a meeting room and if we can squeak at a third floor and uh, then rearranging the walkway so it will be an interior walkway new bathrooms over there that bathroom will come out the stairwell will come out that little landing will come out that wall will come out those icons will be on the back wall. So our area will increase in size, our worship space, plus we can accommodate more people in the hall and have classrooms and those kind of things. So that's the vision, that's the whole reason we needed a new rectory, why we got the property next door, one of those. So the second collection on the first Sunday of each one is for those things, just so they then uh, the third Sunday, the Sunday after is the 15th and 16th, 16th of October, is a special medical collection to the clergy, trying to help <coughs> As a recipient of that, I am very thankful for your, for your generosity in that. It's nice to be able to go to the doctor when I need to, so thank you for that. I think that's, that's enough. That. It's going to be nice weather this week. While I'm away, hot down here, but nice here. Pack a lunch. Go to the park. Sit on a bench and eat your sandwich. Look over the water. Take a little bit of time 
just to enjoy the outdoors that God has given us. We get so busy. I know I'm speaking from my own experience, even before I was a priest, how busy we can go. Always something. If you're homeschooling, take the kids out and see how many flowers you can identify at some particular place. Or the birds. Make some kind of outing. Go to the zoo. It's not too expensive. After lunch, you can go there. But take a little time just to enjoy the world around us. Because we're living our lives at such a rate of speed that we're not trying to constantly say, did you enjoy the creation? Did you like that bird that flew by the other day? Did you take time to see it? <coughs> are we are so busy on that next task. I got to get the next task done. I got to get the next task done. I got to get it done. Because you know, <clears throat> when I was a salesman, we didn't have the, um, the, the little phones. We didn't have palm pilots. We didn't have the blackberries. What we had was a handwritten calendar. Remember those? I mean, there were stores, Franklin Kobe were dedicated to fancy calendars and organizers. Oh, and you were most successful based on how fancy your calendar was and how full every minute of the day was. That shows you were a mover and a shaker. Oh, you were successful. This that man, he's going for this. But life was just passing us by as I fell in that trap myself. Birthdays came and went, anniversaries came and went, and I was so busy with, oh, i got to get on to the next task. And life, I missed it. I missed it. So don't miss it. You only get one life in this world, and it's a preparation for the next, but it's meant to be an amazing life. One filled with life and love and hope. Just doing, though, what he's asked us to do. And it puts it all into perspective. Yes, there's difficulty around us. And we pray for that as we go about our day. But it's okay to stop. To sit in your back patio. Enjoy a cup of tea or an iced tea or a cola or whatever. <coughs> watch your kids. Watch the neighbors. Kids. Watch all of you. Just go out and do something. That's with family, friends, or even by yourself, looking at the beauty that God has given. I don't mean to take your time away from, you know, our social downloads. It's important to be reminded of what you already know. It's important to be reminded of what you already know. Maybe give that some consideration. Have a wonderful week, and if at all possible, share what God has done with for you to somebody else. For you, O Christ, are all glory to you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Thank you.
Lord God grant to his servant Ronnie, who celebrated her birthday, grant the Lord many years. God grant her many years. God grant her many years. God grant her many blessed years. In love and happiness. In love and happiness. God grant her many blessed years. Rise the amongst us. My gracious.
God, my God, help him to be invisible fire. You make your angels flaming fire. In your inexpressible love, you have condescended to give me your divine flesh. You have allowed me to be a partake of your divinity by possessing both body and precious blood. May they penetrate my entire body and the spirit in all my bones. May they burn away my sin, enlighten my soul, and brighten my understanding. May they sanctify me, make me dwell and quicken me, that I too may be in you forever. With your blessed Father, and your all Holy Spirit, and the prayers of your holy, most pure mother, and of all the saints. Amen. Christ our God, who is given to you and made you worthy to be a partaker of your most pure body and precious blood. I praise, bless, and worship you. I glorify you and extol your salvation. O Lord, now and ever and forever. Amen. Most holy lady, if they are told, the light of my darkened soul, my hope, my protection, my refuge, my comfort, and my joy. I thank you for naming me unworthy as I am to be a partaker of the most pure body and precious blood of your Son. You gave birth to the true light, enlightened the eyes of my heart. You bore the source of immortality, gave life to me when dead in sin. O oh, compassionate and loving Mother of the merciful God, have mercy on me. Grant me compunction, contrition of heart, humility of mind, and the recollection of my scattered thoughts. Make me worthy, even until my last breath, to receive the most pure and sanctified mysteries without condemnation for the healing of my soul and body. Give me tears of repentance and confession that I may praise and glorify you all the days of my life. For you are blessed and glorified forever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, our God, may your holy body bring me everlasting life. May your precious blood remit my sin. May this Eucharist give me joy, health, and happiness. At your dread second coming, grant that I, a sinner, may stand at the right side of your Lord. The prayers of your most pure mother and of all. 